For over a year, we have been searching for a soundbar to finally come along and challenge our long-term reference, the Sennheiser Ambio. So, is today the day the Ambio is dethroned? Let's find out. Samsung's latest flagship soundbar system, the Q990B, is an 11.1.4 channel Dolby Atmos and DTS-X home theater system, dare I say, home theater replacement. Now, the Q990B replaces the Q950A we reviewed last year, and that became our other reference soundbar system, not named Ambio. For 2022, not much has changed, at least not internally. The Q990B system gets a modest bump in power to 656 watts, which powers the bar, the included wireless surrounds, and the subwoofer. The number of total speakers also remains the same at 22. Like the Q950A, the 990B can playback Dolby Atmos and DTS soundtracks. It has Samsung's own Q Symphony tech, which allows the bar to work in tandem with the speakers inside your Samsung display for a more immersive experience. And it allows Samsung customers to enjoy Dolby Atmos playback wirelessly. You get Samsung's room correction software, AutoEQ, which allows the system to better integrate sonically into virtually any environment. There are numerous options for streaming music, either via your network or services like Spotify Connect, not to mention Bluetooth and AirPlay capability as well. The 990B even has additional HDMI inputs, so you can connect your Blu-ray player or game console for 4K content. How the 990 really differentiates itself from its predecessor is in the looks department. Gone is the fabric wrap bar of the 950A, which I appreciate. While I never thought the 950A was ugly, the thick black cloth wrap was an absolute pain to keep clean, especially if you had pets. Not saying the 990B is what I would call stylish. Check out B&W's Panorama 3 or Bang & Olufsen's Bio Sound Stage for that. But it is functional and looks at home in a lot of living spaces. We connected the Samsung to our LG C2 OLED and X95K Sony LED TV using an HDMI cable and Samsung's ARC eARC equipped HDMI port. Sadly, we had to send back Samsung's 8K QLED display before the 990B's arrival and couldn't test Q Symphony, but I suspect it works as our 950A never gave us any issue. And setup of the system itself is pretty straightforward, and you can do it either using the included remote or using the Samsung SmartThings app, which is available for iOS and Android. Nothing against the remote, but you should really use the app to get things going. The added adjustability within the app allows for easier control over the individual speaker's volume, something that is new on the 990B. Of course, you also have access to tone controls, room equalization, and more within the app as well. Once set up, you likely won't have to use the app all that much unless, of course, you use it for streaming music. With the bar in its adaptive sound profile and after running auto EQ, the overall frequency response is pretty good. In our room, bass was a little bit overpronounced, as you can see here in the measurements. Taking the sub to negative six resulted in a fairly flat response and a more seamless handoff between the subwoofer and soundbar. I have to say, in measuring the bar with and without Samsung's auto EQ engaged, there was not much of a difference. In other words, it's no Dirac or Odyssey. But all in all, with minimal Speaking, I was able to get the Samsung to a place where its response would impress even an audiophile. Using the SmartThings app, you really can dial the whole system in to taste. But measurements aside, watching the climactic dogfight at the end of Top Gun Maverick was cinematic AF. We have six dedicated in-ceiling speakers, and while I knew they were not connected, the sensation of action passing overhead using Samsung's four upward-firing Atmos speakers had me checking to be sure. The full 360-degree immersion of the Samsung system was shockingly good. The presence of side-firing reflective speakers on the bar, as well as both surround speakers, meant that even in our open concept living space, surround traveled front to back with zero sonic gaps. And that sense of immersion listening to music was just as good. Queuing up Harry Styles' latest Music for a Sushi Restaurant in Atmos placed Harry and the band front and center with the track's ambient and more spatial cues dancing about our room and overhead for a musical experience that simple two-channel setups can't really replicate. But keeping with two-channel music, when shuffling through my usual demo material, all the tracks sounded surprisingly hi-fi through the 990B when I placed it in its adaptive sound mode. 
but regardless of the content, I did avoid using the bar's surround sound game or standard modes, which to me, they just sounded far too localized, and they really take away from the 990's awesome 360 degree experience. Even when processed to faux surround, stereo tracks have a two channel like presence, and I know that I said more than once that I could easily live with this setup for music and movies and not feel the least bit guilty about it. But for best results, I did have to turn up the system side firing and overhead speakers about plus three before arriving at a sound that I preferred when listening to two channel content. Regardless of whether the content was music or movies, the sound was always well-balanced, nuanced, and detailed, with terrific focus on dialogue and vocals. Not having to make extra adjustments to the dialogue was especially helpful for Christy during our many nights spent watching the not-so-historically accurate dramedy The Great on Hulu. Now, for my taste, I did have to turn the sub down a bit from the factory default setting so that it would blend more seamlessly with the bar in our room. And once I did that, the bass from the 8-inch woofer was surprisingly agile. Thankfully, unlike some other soundbar systems, Samsung lets you adjust the sub to taste, not to mention each individual speaker. As for some concerns, similar to the 950A, the 990B does not like Sony displays. Who knows, maybe it's vice versa. When connected to the LG OLED, we experienced zero issues. However, when switching to the Sony X95K, it was a nightmare. It took entirely too much troubleshooting to get the two to recognize each other's EARC capabilities so that we could enjoy Dolby Atmos soundtracks and movies. I was eventually able to get the partnership to work and work well, but I won't lie and tell you that the pairing is plug and play. Also, if you have an older phone like I do, you may experience some issues with the SmartThings app. I'm still rocking an iPhone 8 Plus and until recently have never had issues with the app. However, both the phone and the app got an update during our review period and they both became quite buggy. When using Christie's newer iPhone 12 Pro, the app performed flawlessly, so I have to assume the issue lies with my dusty old phone. Jumping into comparable soundbars, hovering around $1,700, the Samsung is going to be cross-shopped against soundbars like LG's new S95 QR, Denon's home wireless 5.1 system, the Sony A7000 with comparable subwoofer, the Sony A9 system, and maybe even higher-end solutions such as the Ambio. So let's start with the Ambio and work our way backwards. One of Ambio's most impressive qualities is that it manages to pack the lion's share of its performance into a single chassis, saving you space and making setup easier. As an all-in-one solution, the Ambio still has no rival as far as I am concerned, but looking specifically at the movie watching experience, the 990B is every bit the old Ambio's equal, if not superior, when set up correctly. Now, I haven't heard the updated Ambio yet, so we're just going to have to wait and see what changes may exist. As for the somewhat controversial Sony HT-A9 system, look, I love that system and continue to advocate for it, despite some concerns that it is buggy or lacks bass. For the record, in my review, I told you more than once that the SW5 sub was not an option, but a requirement, and to make sure you had a clean Wi-Fi network if you were experiencing any dropouts. If you heeded my warnings, chances are you're going to like that system. When set up correctly, it is a masterpiece of my modern tech and arguably the most future forward speaker system we have seen in some time. But if ease of use is one of your criteria for making a purchasing decision, the Samsung is better and sounds just as good. For those of you who are critical of the Sony A9 system for its lack of a center channel, the Samsung is a better option for you. Also, if you are concerned about dropouts, you're likely not going to have as many issues with the Samsung. Now, as for the A7000, I still do not recommend that bar, and you can read why in my full written review over on our website. As for the new LG bar, well, I don't think the two are actually that comparable. I'm still in the middle of evaluating that system, but at this point in my review, I think the LG system is going to be most suitable for those of you with smaller to medium-sized rooms, whereas the 990B, it can go for broke in any situation. Moving on to the Denon Home Wireless 5.1 system, which retails for roughly the same as the Samsung. The 990B is a far more capable system, though I have to say I prefer the look, build, and smaller stature of the Denon system. Looks aside, if I had to choose one based on performance and sound quality alone, I'm picking the Samsung all day. Which maybe leaves the only comparison that truly matters. Should you upgrade your Q950A to the new Q990B? No. 
While I 100% prefer the new styling and design of the 990B system to that of the outgoing 950A, sonically, there just isn't enough of a difference, if any, between them. And yes, I measured them against one another to be sure. When using the same settings and measurement setup, the differences between the two were so slight that I wouldn't say they would be immediately audible to anyone, let alone me. The 990B will give you more adjustment options, so if you are a tweaker or have a more challenging space, get the 990B. But if you already own the 950A, congrats, you still have one of the best soundbar systems on the market. But if you've held out for a 990B, good news, you're also great. The Samsung is an absolute beast and can go toe to toe with modest to maybe even mid-level home theater speaker systems at or around the same price and maybe even a buck or two above. It is fantastic at recreating the cinematic experience and it's just so easy to enjoy and use day to day that it is no wonder why it is such a popular choice with only one exception. The Samsung Q990B is still the soundbar system to beat. So that's it. That is now my review of Samsung's Q990B soundbar system, but I have a feeling Christy has some thoughts. I love it. Yeah? And if you can't have fun with this thing, you're dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally think it sounds better than the Q950A. Uh -huh. I feel like there are some improvements there, just like there's a little bit more clarity for me, and the mm -hmm. Atmos surround speakers seem better, in my opinion. Yeah. I know that you said that the measurements were nearly identical, so I can't yeah. really explain what it is that seems different or better. It just, it just does. Yeah. Um, yeah, they are nearly identical. Um, there may have been some minor changes with like the speaker layouts on some of the, on where the drivers are located in the bar itself. I know the 990B definitely gives you way more adjustability. And I had played with some of the, uh, levels on each individual speaker. Um, which that may have been what you were responding to. And that's that level of adjustability that you did not get in the Q950A. So I'm not saying that they're the same bar. If you have a 950A, like I said in the review, you don't have to replace it. But the 990B is sonically very similar, but the adjustability is far improved. Yeah. And I think, didn't you say something about the rear speakers where they, they're, they're a little bit different. So maybe they that, are different. Yeah. Maybe that could explain. Yeah some of the the changes but yeah. i again for me i i would get the 990b mm -hmm. um if you had the opportunity i definitely think if you are expecting that you could pick the 950a up and on sale and save money i'm not really seeing that um i have found the q950a available still online but um actually at full msrp it's actually more expensive really than the new model. Wow. Uh, at least what I saw. Wow. Um, there is one that is marked down a little, but there's not, it's not a significant enough savings, in my opinion, that would push me to get an older version of anything. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I mean, if they were closing it out at like a thousand bucks, slam dunk. But yeah. if that's not the case, get the new one. Just yeah. get the new one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't find a better deal out there, but I'm, I'm not seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for those of you who are going to inevitably ask, no, we still have not heard the Sonos Arc yet. <laughs> I just blanked that completely from my yeah, memory. Yeah, I mean, some things I just wish would die. <laughs> but but they don't. They come back like a zombie on Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, look, here's the deal. And until they come out with a new version mm -hmm. of the Arc, we are not going to go review it. Yeah. We can't get them to reply to our emails. That's fine. That's their decision. If we're going to spend our own money yeah. to review anything, mm -hmm. it has to make sense. And at this point, there are plenty of reviews out there already that, ex that exist for the ARC. Yeah. Uh, so until they come out with a new one, just admit you already own it so we can all <laughs> move on. Because you all you're looking for is validation. You've already spent your money. You've got it. Just yeah. be happy. I hear it's great. You're validated. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just going to lie to you and be like, oh, yeah, I heard it once. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was Are you great. happy now? Same thing with Nakamichi. Look. Oh, God. Again, yeah. another brand that I've reached out to for review samples. They have at least been kind enough to reply to tell me no. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's it's not coming. So, And for the one guy who is inevitably going to ask me, no, the Enclave is not a good system. <laughs> It's expensive, <laughs> it's ugly, and yeah. it doesn't sound good. I'm sorry. 
So you, you like the 990B. Let's bring it back to the Samsung, the reason why we're here. Oh, yeah, I like it. You like it. Yeah, and I still like the 950A. Mm -hmm. It's They're both exceptional soundbars uh, that, that I would have zero problems re recommending. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the Ambio goes, I, I don't think that I mentioned that. No, I didn't. Um, I still think it's the best soundbar system out there on the market. Mm -hmm. um, but we have I no idea what the new ones I are I have no like. idea. Um, yeah, I still think the Ambio is great. Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I can't wait to have the opportunity to get the new one. Again, that's probably going to be something we have to buy with our own money mm -hmm. because since the new people have taken over, I don't know. We suddenly don't hear from them and I can't get a, a response despite uh, being in communication earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, they know we want it. Uh, we, they, we got a press release, yeah. you know, Hey, <laughs> Yay. congratulations. <laughs> you know how to send hit send on an email. Bare minimum. Uh, bare minimum. <laughs> bare minimum. Um, but as far as how the new one sounds, I don't know. It looks like it might have gotten some, um, stylistic updates, Definitely which I'm grateful did. for because that Definitely. was the one thing. Uh, that yeah, I had a problem with with it was the old a log. It's yeah, it's, it's <laughs> literally like it was a log. <laughs> yeah, just a, a, you went out back in the woods and cut a tree down and threw it on your it on your <laughs> on your media console. Done. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, that that all that all that extra space that they use to uh, put all those speakers in there really does make a difference. I mean, yeah. it's a great great sounding system. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. So yeah, we're it's gonna. Probably be a minute before we get the new one and the new sub that came out. Um, oh, and by the way, no, I don't give a shit about the new Sono sub either. So, oh, the trash can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Who uh, cares? Uh, but anyway, all that all that stuff aside, I think that if you're looking for something that's going to come as close to the Ambio as possible, the Samsung Q990B is really the only thing that I think approximates it in any in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Yeah. I would say if you're tight on space and need an all-in-one solution, the Ambio is still the soundbar to beat. But if you can use some wireless surrounds and don't mind a wireless subwoofer, the Samsung is right there with it neck and neck. Well, that is now our review of the Samsung Q990B 11.1.4 Dolby Atmos and DTSX soundbar system. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you, I know we haven't reviewed the Ambio yet, but is the 990B the best soundbar of 2022? Put your votes in now and we'll see how we feel at the end of the year. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.